My name is Luca Gripcic. I'll be talking about inverse design of optical surfaces with tandem neural networks. Okay, so in the traditional approach to design or discovery, we usually start with what we know and we use that information to um, search or predict something that we want to find. But it, with inverse design, we start with the desired outcome or target and we use that to to work our way backward to find the starting conditions that will get us there. We can use optimization algorithms for this. Um, they can help us navigate through these fast and usually complex design spaces as our major challenges here indicate. We can also use machine learning algorithms which have a major benefit of being reusable within the same design space. Thus ultimately we can save up on computational and or experimental resources. Okay, since so we're going to be designing these optical surfaces, it's actually important to define what they actually are. Um, so they're engineered materials that enable us to manipulate the electromagnetic field um, beyond the capabilities of materials that we can find in nature. Um, they're engineered by texturing the surface of plain materials with ultra-fast lasers. We have applications like, I don't know, stealth and aerodynamics, and more importantly, energy storage and conversion applications. We're going to be focusing on inversely designing uh, thermophotovoltaic emitters and the property that we'll be looking at is going to be uh, spectral emissivity. I'll, I'll get to that. Okay, so the first question here one might ask is why would we want to use machine learning to inversely design these optical surfaces? So um, to numerically model these light matter interactions that are, ta that are taking place on the material surface, um, it can be very expensive as it involves multiple layers of complexity. So the main idea here is to skip everything in between and just focus on mapping these spectral emissivity values to the laser fabrication parameters that are power, uh, scanning speed, and the spacing of the textures that we have. Uh, so as I said, spectral emissivity is the property we're looking for and it's just a curve that's a function of the wavelength and it tells us how well uh, does do the surfaces emit infrared radiation? Uh, to achieve all this, we're working with machine learning. We need a data set that was generated by our collaborators at the Laser Technologies Group uh, of LBO. Okay, as I said, we're skipping all the physics. We're focusing on mapping these spectral emissivities to laser parameters. Uh, there's a huge problem here. We have um, Sometimes we have nearly identical spectral emissivity values that can map to multiple very different laser parameters, which means that we have like a complex one-to-many mappings situation happening over there. And um, that doesn't really sound like a huge problem in practice because that means that you can maybe have, a, have multiple choices when you're actually doing inverse design. But if you want to train the machine learning mo model, it creates a major problem because the model can't really distinguish if its predicted value can map back to its input value. And thereby, you can't really minimize the loss function. That's your major task when you're actually training the machine learning model. So we need a solution for this. Uh, we use the tandem neural network approach. And you can see uh, it's segmented into these two major parts. The top part here, what we actually do first, we train a forward model that maps the laser parameters to the spectral emissivity values. We do not have a complex one-to-many relationship in this case, and we can get a highly accurate forward model. When we get a highly accurate forward model, we use it in this tandem learning approach with the inverse model. Uh, and the major task that the forward model has, as you can see in the bottom part of the figure, um, it actually checks if the inversely predicted parameters map back to the original input value that is spe spectral emissivity. So we actually infer the spectral emissivity from the predicted laser parameters and we compare the two spectral emissivity values and that's our loss function. And that's how we can actually tune the inverse deep neural network. If you want to use this to design these optical surfaces, we just need the inverse deep neural network uh, for usage. Okay, as I said, um, we're mapping these 800 dimensional emissivity curve uh, values to the three, di three dimensional laser parameter space. We're going to need a large data set. Our collaborators generated a large data set of 35,000 samples. Um, the 
plain material that was used for texturing was stainless steel. That also plays a huge role here because if you use another material, you have different physics happening there. And we also trained three diff different models that were only uh, varied by training slash validation set sizes. Um, okay, here are some results. We have two metrics here. One is design novelty and the other is prediction error. They're, they've bo both been normalized between, within uh, zero and 100. Uh, the design novelty tells us how different are the inversely predicted laser parameters from the test set laser parameters. It's not, not really an error. It's just like some kind of normalized Euclidean distance that we're looking at here. The prediction error, however, tells us how well did these inversely predicted laser parameters actually reconstruct the original test set uh, spectral emissivity values. And it's some kind of like normalized root mean square error. And we can see that for the whole test set, we have an average error of 1.7%, which is pretty good, especially if you look at the other figure. Um, these are like a set of predicted versus true curves that all have like an error below 2%. So it's like a very successful model. And finally, I want to talk about some actual application here. So my collaborators were interested in uh, designing these thermophotovoltaic emitters that um, have the optimal uh, spectral emissivity that looks like a, an ideal step function, which is very unphysical. Uh, so the idea here is that you have these, this kind of spectral emissivity that's, that's emitting um, thermal radiation from the TPV emitter towards the photovoltaic cell. So that's our target right there. We use that to infer uh, several different sets of parameters from our three different models, which were only varied by training set sizes. And the cool part was that we actually experimentally engineer them. We got an experimental validation, got as close as possible to the uh, ideal step function. Uh, as you can see, the red, the green, and the blue curves here, which means that we can actually use this model, this approach, uh, for this kind of task, which is really cool. But in general, if you have an inverse design problem, you can use this. It might be even more interesting than, uh, I don't know, like generative models because it's uh, kind of intuitive, it's modular, you can see what's actually, actually happening here. There are no latent variables, etc. Okay, so some future work ideas here. We want to use transfer learning because we're working with stainless steel. Uh, assume we have another material, we want to see if we can transfer these low level features from uh, the stainless steel inverse model to the uh, Inconel, for example, model, which is an alloy. Uh, Furthermore, we want to use active learning. Uh, we want to efficiently tra train these models from experimental data with the minimum, uh, minimum data set sizes, basically, which is very in line with the whole autonomous experimentation idea that's very important right now. And we, wanna, we started using ensemble learning algorithms, which work really, really well. We have some very interesting tailored solution for this problem also. They work really great. And um, yeah, I just wanted to list all my co-authors and collaborators here because this presentation was based on a paper that's currently in review. Thank you.